Good morning. Wasn't that last song absolutely beautiful? It's a new song, Behold the Lamb is what it's called. I was just asking Chris, it's from uh, Passion. I'm going to have to get that uh, downloaded this week. That was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, over time in life, I have uh, learned to become a better listener. In 2001, I was asked to get involved with an activity that I had never been involved with before. And it interests me, but I didn't have anything to participate. Um, but I got some things, and I went, and I absolutely had a great time. But since then, um, I have thoroughly enjoyed it, even though every time I've gone and participated, I haven't always received the prize for which I was going after that. Three years ago, when I was really into it, I involved a lot of people, and one of those persons was my dad. We spent a lot of time um, going out and coming back um, on this particular activity. What activity is it? It was hunting. Now, I, list, I, I know that there are some people in this world that give even the most responsible of hunters a, a hard time. Um, they have no problem going to the meat department and getting their own pork chops, but they have a hard time having a hunter going out and shooting their own. So I, I don't understand that, but I, I get it. But I enjoy hunting for more than just the thrill of the hunt. Um, I enjoy going because I have to sit still and I have to be quiet. And I've learned to listen. I've had to learn to get out of the truck very quietly. Get all your gear out of the back. Walk in, climbing the stand, you know, adjusting yourself in the stand when you're moving your seat. You don't want it squealing because animals in the woods, they have a keen sense of sight, smell, or hearing, or a combination of all three. And so you can spoil things very easily if you're not quiet. I love to listen in the woods. I love listening to the pine trees sing their song to God when the wind's moving through the tops. Absolutely amazing. Uh, one day, I was sitting up in the stand, and I saw a hog family of 20 that came in to eat corn. And um, the only time, I, and the only reason why I lifted my rifle was just not to take a shot because I wasn't going to shoot, but just to look through the scope at these little babies that were chewing on one kernel of corn. They chew it, and they pick up another one and chew it. I sat there for 45 minutes and took videos and took pictures. They never knew I was up there until... 45 minutes into it, something, not me, something scared them as if you grabbed one of the legs of the little ones and you decided to have a little pig in the blanket, and they just took off squealing through the woods running. Um, but it's amazing just to sit up there and listen. Well, since 2001, of course, I've got all the gear and all the gadgets, but I'm not a pr as proficient hunter as Steve or Gerald or Ed um, but I have walked out of the woods with a 217-pound boar that was just absolutely fantastic pulled pork, by the way. Um, but listening is of critical importance. Now, hopefully you've taken the opportunity to learn to listen in your own life. There are times that we need to speak, and there are times to remain quiet. And not knowing the difference usually leads to some very embarrassing moments. Like take, for instance, in the library. When you go to the library, the library is not a place where you use your outside voice. The library is not a place where you use your inside voice. You're supposed to whisper in the library. And then school, you know, the teacher tells us that, um, you know, it's test time. It's time for some desk work. So um, that's not the time to start talking to your neighbor. That's the time if you have a question, what do you do? You raise your hand, the teacher either calls you up or they visit you at your desk to get your answers to your questions. Then you go to the medical doctor and you're talking with the doctor. Yeah, you, you have your list of questions, but that's the time to listen. You ask your question, then you listen. You don't answer your cell phone when you're talking to your doctor. Make sure you turn off your cell phone when you go to the doctor's office. In church, there's times to make a ruckus. And there's time to talk, there's time to be loud and celebrate, but there's also times of stillness and quiet, like the Lord's Supper or, or during a prayer. When your spouse asked you, when she asked you if her cooking was as good as your mother's, that was not the time to get quiet, okay? You should have been ready for that one. Or when someone comes to you with a problem, that's not the time to do a lot of talking. It's the time to do a lot of listening. When someone comes to you with a loss... 
someone's lost a loved one, sometimes we say some of the dumbest things at the most important times in people's lives. I'll never forget uh, standing, listening to someone try to comfort a mom who recently had a miscarriage, and she was told, don't worry about it, you're young enough, you can have another. Like, that is just awful. Sometimes we just need to give a hug. Sometimes we just need to encircle the person with love quietly or to just sit still with them and have our presence be known. Sometimes in life it's just better um, not to say anything, just time, time to listen. Today we're actually looking at a section of scripture where Joshua is told by the commander of the Lord's armies, God, um, to have the people be quiet. And, and to listen. In fact, they were going to walk around the city of Jericho six times, once for each of the six days. They were going to do that six days in a row. They were going to walk around Jericho one time in silence. They weren't going to say anything with their voices. The only thing they were going to do is listen to the seven trumpets that were going to be blasting that the priests were going to be playing. And then on day seven, they were going to walk around the city seven times. And then when there was a loud trumpet blast, that was when the people were supposed to shout and the walls were going to come tumbling down. And so they received their instructions of how they were going to do this. And they weren't supposed to say a word while they were walking around the city for Seven days. Wow. Let's pick this up in Joshua chapter 6. It says this, Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant and the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the ark while the trumpets blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, you shall not shout or make your voice heard. Neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, before the ark of the Lord, walked on. And they blew the trumpets continually, and the armed men were walking before them. And the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets blew continually. And the second day they marched around the city once, and returned into the camp. So they did for six days. Now, It takes courage in our lives just to listen. Listen, the battle's already been won. God had already secured the victory for the Israelites over Jericho. Did you pick that up in verse 2? Verse 2 says this, And the Lord said to Joshua, let's throw it up there, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. The battle was over before it even began. God told Joshua that he didn't need to worry about the result. The result was in. Now, the king of Jericho didn't know the result was in, even though he could see that things weren't very good. He shut the the city. No one was getting out. No one was coming in. He didn't want insiders helping the outsiders, and he didn't want the outsiders infiltrating the inside. So he shut that city down. They were on lockdown. But the result was in. The war was over. God had already secured the victory. And God has already secured salvation's victory for you and for me as well through Christ. Now, if you're a Christian, you know about this. 
You know how he did it. But maybe you're still exploring the claims of Christ, so let me explain with clarity what happened. God sent his only son, his lamb, to the world, born of a virgin. The miracle of, of miracles. I mean, we all know where babies come from. This baby didn't come in the usual way. He was conceived through the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin. Lived a perfect life. That means he didn't do anything wrong. No attitude needing to be adjusted. No bad actions. No bad thoughts. No, no bad moments. No slips. He fulfilled all the Old Testament law. All the do's, all the don'ts. King James versions, all the shalls, all the shout nots. He did them. He did it perfect. And they put him to death. The Romans put him to death. The Jews were clamoring to have him crucified. They were threatened by his leadership. They crucified him. But there was a bigger plan in place. His death was for your ransom. His death was in your place. You and I deserved that kind of a death. But that's not the death that we got. He paid that price so that we wouldn't have to pay that price. He was buried. The reason why he was buried was because he was dead. That's what you do with dead people. You bury them. He was dead, but three days later on a Sunday morning, which we're getting ready to celebrate in just a few weeks, he came out of the grave showing himself to disciples as well as over 500 people at one time. Now Satan did everything he could do to keep Jesus in that grave. He wrote a two-ton tilly stone across the entrance, thought that Jesus was going to stay in there. He had the Roman guard parked out front thought Jesus was going to stay in there. He had a Roman seal uh, with a cord put around the entrance of that tomb. He thought Jesus was going to stay in there, but Jesus did not stay in there because the angel of the Lord came down. And as John's language describes in the gospel, that that angel picked up that stone and hurled it. No wonder the guards stood there like dead men of what they saw. Jesus came out of the grave and he secured the victory of our salvation and our sin victory through what he did. The battle was over. You know, the city of Jericho, someone was coming in. Even though they were trying to keep them out, the Israelites were coming in. And in that grave, someone was coming out. Even though Satan tried to keep him in, Jesus was coming out. The victory was won and you and I didn't have to say a thing. Now listen, God's instructions need to be followed. The instructions were very clear to Joshua. This commander of the Lord's armies standing in front of Joshua having this conversation. And we said last week that there are two big reasons why we know that this was a theophany. God was manifesting himself to a human being. Number one, he was standing on holy ground. Number two, Joshua worshipped and he wasn't stopped. But number three... That verse, chapter chapter 6, verse 2, says that it's the Lord that says this to Joshua. So he's having this conversation with the commander. It is the Lord. And the Lord says to Joshua, listen, this is how you're going to secure the victory. What I want you to do is I want you to put the, the front guard, the men of war, in the front. I want you to split them up. I want you to have some guys out in the front. Then I want you to have the people walking behind the front guard. Then I want you to have seven priests that are going to blow them trumpets. Man, their lips are going to be callous. If, if not before, by the end of this, they're going to be callous. Then I want you to position the ark. My presence, the symbol of my presence is going to be right there. And then I want you to have the rear guard. And also, when you're doing this little processional, this is how I want you to do this. On day one, I just want you to walk around the city one time. It might take you an hour and a half, two hours max. You'll be able to go around that city. But that's all I want you to do. But I don't want you to say anything. I want you to be quiet. Then day two, I want you to do the same thing. Three, four, five, six, same thing. But on day seven... I want you to walk around this same processional. I want you to walk around the city seven times. And then those trumpeters, man, when they give that loud blast, I want you to yell at the top of your voice. Them walls are going to come tumbling down and everyone's going to rush in. The city's going to be yours. This is, this is a done deal. That's the instructions. Now, one of the things I love about Joshua is that he listens and he obeys constantly. Now, what happens if the people would have gotten on day five, they walked around, they wake up on day six and they say, you know what? Time to go fishing. Time to go hunting. Time to just, you know what? I'm tired today. You know, my back's a little sore. We're a little old, you know, my knees. I think we're just going to Let's just not walk today. We'll pick it up tomorrow. We'll do twice tomorrow. What would have happened? They would have lost the blessing. They would have not had the victory. They had to do what God told them to do. 
You see, Jesus has told us how to follow him. He's told us how to follow him as Christians. He's told his disciples what to do. He told the Israelites to blow the seven trumpets. He told us to have faith. He told the Israelites to carry the Ark of the Covenant in procession. He told us to repent of our sins. He told them to be quiet, not to say a word. He's told us to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He told them to walk around the city one time for six days, seven times on the seventh day. He told you and me to be baptized. He told them to split the men of war, have the front guard, and have a rear guard. Told them how to position themselves. He's told you and me to remain faithful. So it's up to us to follow the instructions. We don't have to change it. We don't have to worry about what he said. We know exactly what he's told us to do, to embrace salvation's gift. Listen, if you haven't really heard God, it's because you haven't placed your attitudes and actions into motion that's consistent with God's word. That's how we know whether or not we have heard God or not. How do we know that Joshua heard the commander of the Lord's armies? He did what he told him to do. He set it up. He he did exactly like that. You know, the fact of the matter is Joshua didn't say, you know what, God, I've got a different plan. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Joshua telling the Lord's commander of the Lord's army, he's standing there with a drawn sword. Can you imagine Joshua saying, you know what, I like that plan, but I like my plan better. Here's what I think is a better plan. And we do that all the time to God. You know that? We do that. He said, Joshua would have been like, you know what, we've got some, we got some archers that are off the chain. We could, They can pull that bow back. They can loose those arrows over those double walls. Man, they're just going to knock it. And listen, we invented this new thing called the grappler. We're just dying to try it out. Let's throw the grappler over the wall and and shimmy up the ropes. And then, you know, have you you recognized that our guy's been working out? I mean, there's some beefy, stocky guys. Let's just stormtrooper, man, the gates. Let's Let's just rush them. Can you imagine Joshua doing that? That's not what Joshua did. He listened. And he obeyed. He aligned his attitudes and his actions to what God told him to do. Maybe it would help us if we had the commander of the Lord's army standing there with an unsheathed sword in our lives, standing right in front of us. Oh, wait. We kind of do, don't we? We have a Savior who went to the cross, who died on the cross, who gave his life for us. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And every time we put it into practice in our lives, every time we align our attitudes and actions, guess what? It's an offensive weapon. It's the only weapon that we should be using. Not our tongue, you know, that we're quick with the wit. Not our wit, not our knowledge, but the sword of the Spirit. When we hear God and His Word... We'd better listen, and it should make us want to align our attitudes and our actions with him. So what can we do? What can we do to bridge this distance between where we are and where we can be when it comes to listening? Now, if you're the typical American, you live a very loud life. Your TV's always on. Some of our neighbors, their TV never goes off. I mean, it doesn't matter what time of day, I look out and the TV's always on. The radio's always on when we're driving in the car. We're listening to talk radio. We're doing this, we're doing that. We're running the kids here, running the kids there. We're just running, running, running. We text our kids, it's time to eat. We're in the same house. We just don't want to get up. If we even eat dinner together at all, my family's always done that. That's a family tradition. It will always continue to be. Even our adult children, we get together to eat an evening meal together. Why? Because that's the time you find out stuff. That's the time you talk. How was your day? What'd you do? You know, how's it going? So maybe if you're living that very loud life, maybe you'd need to do what Psalm 4610 tells us, which is Stacy's favorite verse. Be still and know that I am God. So this is what I want you to do this week. I want you to just take five minutes a day. I'm not asking you, you know, I'm not trying to pull your teeth. I'm not putting you in the dentist chair. It's not a big deal, even though that's going to happen on Tuesday for us. Um, So it's in the brain. I I can't stand the dentist. Um, I'm asking you to do something really, really simple. Just take five minutes. Find a quiet place. Leave your phone inside. Don't take your phone. And just, whether it's inside or outside, just go sit and listen to God. Bring a piece of paper. bring Bring a pen. And write down what he tells you. Five minutes. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to leave. Just quiet your world down and listen. Now listen, he's not going to tell you something to do that's contrary to his word. You've seen people like that on TV. Oh, God told me to murder my family. No, God didn't tell you that. 
okay? You're way off. The fact of the matter is God's not going to tell you something that is contradictory to his word. But he is going to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. Don't be in a hurry to leave that place. Now, also what I want you to do is I want you to put a little bit more distance between the person that's talking to you, the period in their last sentence, and your first words. Just put a little bit more distance. In other words, I want you to put a little more distance between what's going on I'm here and what's getting ready to come out here. Put a little bit more distance. That's why James says this in James 1.19. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. How would our world change if we took time out to be quiet? And to listen. I think our world would be richer and fuller. I think our lives would be lived in a more simple way. And I think that's a good thing. Isn't that worth striving for? Or how about our family life? How would that change if our relatives spent a little bit less time trying to get their point across and a little more time listening to the others in their family? You know, I think our families would be filled with love. And grace and mercy and less judgment. Isn't that worth striving for? Or how about at work? How would our workplaces change if we listened to the people that were on the front line? If we started listening to our boss or listening to our coworkers or listening to our clients? I think that our, our businesses would grow. I think they would be enriched. Isn't that worth striving for? Or how would our church change if you know, we'd stop telling God what to do and what we wanted him to do and started listening to what he's telling us to do and we immediately obeyed. We aligned our attitudes and our actions. You know, we'd be a powerhouse of a congregation. We would have testimonies continually building about what God is doing in our lives. Isn't that worth striving for? What does that tell me that I need to do? Well, it may tell me that I need to start listening to God. It may be telling me that I need to start listening to my spouse. Man, I wish I would have listened to Susie in the early days. Man, I could have saved myself a bunch of trouble just by listening. You know, Don Jones was here. He'd say amen. Amen? Amen? We have to listen to the wise people that God's put in our lives. Maybe it's time to start listening to your pastor. Maybe it's time to start listening to an, an elder who's been speaking truth into your life. Maybe it's time to start listening to our family minister. Maybe it's time to start listening to your parents. Maybe it's time to start listening to your kids or your grandkids. What, I, what do I want you to do this week? I want you just to listen. Listen. Now, next week's April. It's hard to believe, but it's April. And so we're going to take a pause, right, as the people are walking around Jericho. We're going to take a pause. We're going to take a pause for four weeks. And then when we get back in May, we're going to bring those walls to come tumbling down. Because Elliot's going to be speaking in the month of April, leading us up and through Resurrection Sunday. And it's just going to be phenomenal. But don't forget, they're walking around the city. But the victory already belongs to God in our lives, just like it belonged in the Israelites' lives. Let's pray.